Ever wondered how humanity is balancing ocean health and human wealth? Welcome to the Blue Economy. One of the coolest things about SailGP is you get to see the best sailors racing the world's fastest boats. But as I visit the iconic cities on the SailGP circuit, I wonder what makes these places unique away from the race course. I've discovered people from all over the world striving for a better future, redefining social responsibility and driving technical innovation, redesigning how we think about sustainability. If you're interested in finding out what makes these places really tick, join me as we go beneath the surface. And this time we're in the windy city itself, Chicago. Every year on the 8th of June, we celebrate World Oceans Day and it exists as a reminder to everyone that we need to do more to protect arguably our most precious resource, the ocean. And if you watch the news, there's no getting away from it. The ocean is under threat. Aside from the huge amounts of pollution that enter it daily, recent reports suggest that the 1.5 degree threshold will be breached within five years. That's going to speed up sea level rise, increase extreme weather events and see the demise of precious and vital ecosystems. Put simply, every year World Oceans Day becomes more and more important. So I'm going to head across the pond to Milan, where they don't just have a day, but a whole week of education and activity dedicated to celebrating our ocean. It's called Ocean Week Milano, it's in its second year and it's all about those vital marine ecosystems and the fundamental role that we play in protecting them. Basically, being kinder to our oceans. And it's the brainchild of the One Ocean Foundation, the sailing team's Race for the Future partner. One Ocean has several areas of interest, rising awareness, uh, action activity, also increase of knowledge scientific view is very clear. I mean, we are hitting the wall on several, several uh, variables, several aspects. We have a sea level rising, accelerating. We have an increased acidification. We have a warming up of the ocean. This is putting a lot of stress to the environment, uh, to the living organism, but also to the physical aspect. One Ocean's mission is about much more than Ocean Week. It's about inspiring international leaders and global companies to better understand their ocean impact. And that's why the centerpiece of Ocean Week is a new event bringing together the best of science, business and governmental figures to drive change. And it's called the Blue Economy Summit. So let's go check it out. If we're going to have prosperous, vibrant economies, we have to have a healthy, robust environment. One third of the problem comes from damaging nature. If we repair nature, we can actually achieve one third of the climate action that we need. So today we are uh, presenting a, a research project uh, and it's an entire event focused on uh, what we call Blue Economy. Uh, we extend a little bit from what is usually known as Blue Economy, which is usually connected to the industries that are working on the ocean or living on the ocean, like maritime transportation or fisheries and aquaculture, or I would say in tourism. Every action that is happening in land from every business, every production and consumption act has an implication on the ocean through the climate change, through the microplastic, through the eutrophication because you're using uh, fertilizing for your cotton or for the food uh, that you are eating. The blue economy must be sustainable because sustainability is not a complementary part, it needs to be an integrative part of the entire blue economy. We just use carbon because there's a carbon market, okay? but pretty soon they're going to have biodiversity markets. We know the value of a dead ocean, we know the value of a dead fish, but what this work is doing is saying, do you know the value of a living ocean? And they, it turns out that a living ocean is far more valuable than a dead ocean. If I tell you what's the value of a tree, I'll cut it down, sell it as timber. But what is the value of a tree that's living for itself? We can go back to the current economic paradigm that we have that only looks at the ocean from an extractive point of view and rejig it so that we can look at the ocean from a regenerative point of view. Therefore, the ocean gets to live not as a body of water, but as life longing for itself. And humanity gets to live as a result in perpetuity and with abundance. If you're doing good business, you are doing business that is also aiming at preserving your activity in the long term before you need to take care of that. 
So basically, the blue economy is all about harnessing the raw power and the resources of our ocean whilst being mindful of protecting it. And that goes for cities even far away from our seas, just like Milan. And here in Chicago, we're back on the CLGP circuit as season four of the Global Racing League kicks off in the Windy City. Chicago is an amazing venue, a truly global metropolis, just like Milan. And there's a lot of water around, but it's not by the ocean. So you might think, how can we talk about the blue economy, a concept so associated with the world's oceans, in not one, but two cities that aren't by the sea? Well, the United Nations specifies it as a range of economic activities related to oceans, seas and coastal areas and whether these activities are sustainable and socially equitable. So who's to say this doesn't apply to Chicago with an iconic river and one of the great lakes, Lake Michigan? So with that in mind, I'm off to meet an engineer who has not only been integral in creating the city's iconic skyline, but in the face of a changing world, is helping to future-proof the Windy City. I've spent my whole life watching Lake Michigan. I've seen the best and the worst of this lake. Watching the lake at its highest points and the shoreline disappearing, watching the lake at its lowest point. When you go into the Great Lakes, you're shocked because it's wavy and it feels like an ocean, but there's no salt. We're at the largest source of accessible fresh water in the world. As we know, fresh water is a big key and probably something likely to be more scarce as climate change impacts our environment. So we're sitting on a jackpot here. Water is the new oil. Natural resources like water really become our valued resources and their value increases as we adjust to the changes we're experiencing. Chicago has been at the forefront of sustainability from day one. I have spent my career designing buildings in Chicago. The recent years of my career really focused on how do we get here? How do we get to a decarbonized infrastructure? We don't really pay the true cost of you know, our roads and shipping our vegetables across the country. As we start to evolve our infrastructure to decarbonize and mitigate climate change, in addition, the Chicago Climate Action Plan is setting lofty goals to decarbonize our infrastructure in Chicago. We are a cold climate. How do you heat in a cold climate without burning oil and gas? Instead of using electric power to create heat, we are using a technology called heat pumps, which reverses the refrigeration cycle that you have in your air conditioner. So you can extract heat from the air, you can extract heat from water, you move heat around. And when you move heat around, you use like a third of the energy. Natural resources like fresh water will become increasingly important. When we start thinking about where would be a good place to live, one of the places that really comes up is areas that are along the Great Lakes. The lakefront is really for the people of Chicago with equitable access. There are bike trails, there are walking trails, there are beaches. The people of Chicago love the lakefront. Last year when I attended SAIL GP, it was like the culmination of the Chicago waterfront experience and intersection of all that we value here in Chicago. It's pretty rare that lakefront or waterfront property is reserved for the use of the public. So that's the thing that makes Chicago very special and also feeds into its economy. This shoreline has become one of the most precious and iconic parts of the city. And for decades, engineer Mark Wagstaff has been one of its chief protectors. We have some really critical infrastructure that's right up by the lake here in Chicago. We have two of the largest water treatment plants uh, in the country. We also have a major federal highway, Lakeshore Drive, that runs right along here. The Chicago shoreline protects that infrastructure. In addition, we have a lot of natural habitat. We know that sea level rise, it's going up. With the lake, it's a different story. Climate change is this kind of tug of war, if you will, between forces that want to increase the lake level. On the other hand, climate change is also bringing periods of drier weather. So we're actually going into a period of increased uncertainty. A lot of the Chicago shoreline, when it was built in the 1920s and 30s, was built with timber and um, stone blocks. Now that timber is susceptible to rot and deterioration, um, whereas now we often will use sheet pile and concrete that has a longer life 
and can um, reduce maintenance over time. 41st Street Beach was a brand new beach that was added in the 2010s. Structures help to keep the beach sand in place, but they're also very reflective. So the wave energy tends to bounce around. The beach at 41st Street is also stabilized by an offshore breakwater, which is made out of large armor stone. So finding replacement materials that can either use less of that armor stone or can be more effective at breaking wave energy is really important. What we're also seeing is a desire to try to move away from um, carbon intensive materials. So we're always looking for that combination of durability and sustainability. Rockwell is the sponsor of the Danish team at SailGP. When we joined SailGP, we thought it would be a great platform to connect us to people that shared the same values of sustainability and the same passion for the planet. Last year, when we were here in Chicago, we met with the Smith Group and they were telling us about some of the issues that the city faces, in particular the issues with the shoreline. Rockwell's always been about the built environment. Cities is what we do and what we know best. Smith Group have been looking for ways to mitigate the risk of wave power absorption and how that is causing erosion to the shorelines. In our discussions with them, we're exploring different ways that maybe they could actually replenish the solutions they have with more natural solutions based on Rockwell's natural products made from Stonewall. This is a way for us to come into the city, connect to people thanks to SailGP, which acts as an accelerator to introduce us to people that have the city's well-being at heart and enable us to participate in the best way possible. There are a couple of really important projects uh, that we've been involved in. Northerly Island, Smith Group led the planning process and that has now been converted into an area of, of natural habitat. You'll see hills um, with natural vegetation, secluded wetland areas, concert venue, and other park amenities. And it really is a spectacular oasis that is used by Chicagoans year round. We have this incredible resource open to everybody. That makes it a really attractive place for people to live and that draws all kinds of different business uh, here to the city. Knowing that it's gonna be like this for generation after generation makes Chicago and its economy really stable and sustainable. It's clear that cities and businesses are wising up to the importance of the blue economy and smart infrastructure and planning ensure that ocean health and water environments are protected, keeping this economy more agile in mitigating threats like climate change. Ultimately, if our blue economy is healthy, that means our ocean, lakes and rivers are too. That's good for business and the planet and humanity will reap the rewards. Thanks for watching. This episode of Beneath the Surface was brought to you by Rockwall.